54 AD, 3948 AM, a comet, quote, with a terrible glare, unquote, appeared over Rome. One, Ancient Mysteries. 56 AD, 3950 AM, lightning struck both the temples of Jupiter and of Minerva in Rome. This was the year Tacitus was born, Roman historian, author of the Annals of Imperial Rome. Tacitus wrote that at this time the beginning of the year was January the 1st, which was in accordance with ancient religious custom. The Apostle Paul is sent to Rome in second year of Nero, according to Jerome, as agreed by Bede, Ivo, Scalinger, among others. He was a Roman citizen who appealed to Rome for unlawful confinement. Born in Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, which according to Strabo, was the leading city of learning to rival even Alexandria and Athens. On the way to Rome, he was shipwrecked. The oldest of all Christian documents preserved in the Bible are the epistles of Paul. He wrote to the, quote, strangers, unquote, in Rome, not to the Romans. His writings were addressed to Hellenes in Ephesus, to Galatia, Colossae, Corinth, to the Thessalonians and Philippians. From Rome did Paul write to Timothy on behalf of himself and the royal family of Britain, Puddens, Linus and Claudia, the son, daughter and son-in-law of King Caradoc of Britain, also called Caractacus. Caradoc was the son of Bran, the Celtic king of Britain. Caradoc led the British forces against the Romans in 32 battles, but was captured by the treachery of Queen Aregwed of the Brigants, who invited him to stay in her castle. The Romans had venerated Caradoc and freed him in Rome, taking up residence in the Palatium Britannicum, which his granddaughter Claudia Prudentiana converted into Rome's first Christian church. The Apostle Paul was personal friends with the British royal family in Rome. Who Paul really was has been a mystery, for his writings had been rewritten and many false statements given about his apostleship. His birthland Cilicia was founded by Phoenicians on the Black Sea coast. He was probably of Israelite stock. The people of Cilicia were Semitic. Here are some intriguing facts. Paul never mentions any of the four Gospels in his epistles. Paul never quotes anything Jesus ever said in his epistles. Paul does not mention any historical facts about Jesus. No Pilate, Caiaphas, no mention of the Sanhedrin or Herod, Judas or any other person in the Gospel narratives of the Passion. Paul does not mention the trial before Pilate, the scourging, crown of thorns, the sun darkening, only mentioning that Jesus lived during Pilate's reign. Paul wrote nothing of Jesus' bodily resurrection. To Paul, Christ was resurrection in spirit. Paul's epistles never mention any parables of Jesus, any miracles or acts of Jesus. In the writings of Paul there is no Bethlehem, no Nazareth, no virgin birth, no parents of Jesus, no Magi, no John the Baptist, no Judas, no betrayal, no Sermon on the Mount. In fact, Alexander Holub notices that the epistles of Paul bear a resemblance to the Gathers from the Zendavesta of Persia beginning with Yasna XXX onward. On the other side of the coin, neither is Paul known to the first Christian chronicler, Justin Martyr of Samaria, who never mentioned him or his epistles. The book of Acts reads that Paul was known to Jews everywhere, but the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus never mentioned him in his exhaustive histories. Philo never mentioned him, and the epistles of Paul are not mentioned anywhere in the book of Acts. It is very telling that the very first historical mention of Paul is with Marcion, a Gnostic. Before 144 AD, Paul's writings are found mentioned nowhere. See 144 AD. Paul's writings are mentioned later by all three of the Apostolic Fathers. Clement, Polycarp and Ignatius, cited even by Athenagoras. Scholars believe that Paul was a Gnostic and that his epistles were altered for use in the early Christian scriptures as the church rose to power. As the church doctored the epistles, they include statements toward the end of chapters and books, like this one in 1 Corinthians. Paul allegedly writing that about 500 people watched Christ ascend into heaven, a statement scholars believed was not in the original text. According to Arrhenius, the Gnostics did not take the resurrection of Jesus literally. 
but they did believe in the coming of a Messiah. Gnostic belief held that there was a spiritually pure race long ago descended from Seth and that they assumed this lineage through their faith. The Gnostics, the Brahmins of India and the Persians of the Zoroastrian faith held many things in common. In Lower Syria, these Gnostics were also akin to the Nazarenes, Manaeans, the Essenes and the Therapeutans, all these being branches of the same tree that became Christianity, with a trunk planted in Samaria and roots extending into remote antiquity. By Eusebius' account, the Therapeutans were Christians, a people who strived to assemble the pieces of a pure belief system from the ancient world by employing teachings from almost all religions and philosophical systems. The Gnostic beliefs and writings seem to stem from multiple sources, an amalgamation taken from Old Persian, Babylonian, Egyptian, Syrian and Greek beliefs. The links to archaic Judaism are unmistakable, and by extension this means that Gnosticism has roots to ancient Israelite institutions. The Israelites were deported into Babylonia, via the Assyrian deportations. Then the Babylonians deported Judah, even settling many of them in Media and Persia. Through Asia Minor and Phoenicia, the early Greeks and Aegean peoples absorbed wave after wave of Israelite migrations. It was at Egypt when Gnosticism took its known forms, at Alexandria where the scholars and intellectual elite put back together the pieces of the elder faith that had been disseminated and sifted among the nations between 1837-1825 BC. When Abraham, Brahma, taught at Memphis and at the Giza complex in Egypt before the surface blocks of the Great Pyramid, as the Alexandrian scholars collected more and more scrolls and texts from the East, the Aegean and Mediterranean worlds, they began seeing the stunning correspondences between all ancient religions. One of the greatest beliefs common to all nations discovered at Alexandria was the faith that a saviour was going to be born among men who was going to teach the truth. At the beginning of the movement called the Way, later popularised as Christianity, the Gnostics were the main body of these believers. As the early Christian communities recognised Jesus as their saviour embodied within the flesh of a man, it was his message of resurrection and forgiveness that fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of the coming of a new covenant. As Gnosticism and its various sects were the first to accept Christianity, we clearly see that it was the descendants of Israelites who accepted the message that Christianity is the revival of original Israelite faith. 1. Tacitus Annals 3. St. Paul in Britain 4. Strabo X1V 5. Post-Captivity Names of Israel 8. The Greek Myths 9. The Evolution of the Idea of God 10. The History of the Christian Religion to the Year 22 11. The Gospel Truth 12. The Christ Conspiracy 16. Jesus, God, Man or Myth 21. History of the Christian Religion and Church to the Year 300 